Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button from DevOps for Developers, and today I'm setting up an AWS account for a new client. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to just start recording the screen and walk you through what that process is like and show, it, show you some of the different things that I do to secure an AWS account and set it up for success in the future. So we're kind of uh, just freestyling it today. And, uh, let's jump into it and see what happens. I'm logged in here to the AWS management console. And this is a brand new AWS account. I went through, I'm not gonna show you like the setup process for a new account. You click next, enter your credit card info, and it dumps you out here. You can figure that part out, right? But now that I'm in here, I'm logged in as the root user and there's a couple things we need to do. First thing we're gonna do is go to my security credentials and we're gonna set up MFA. So setting up MFA is really easy. If it's not already set up here, which it won't be for your account, you click add and then it shows you a QR code that you scan with your phone if you're using a two-factor auth app on your phone. And then it gives you a set of codes, you enter in those codes to confirm it. And then once you've added that MFA device, go ahead and log out of the root account and log back in with the MFA device just to make sure it works. So whenever I created this MFA device, um, I scanned the QR code from my phone to activate that on my phone, right? So right now I'm the only one who can log in as root unless I give my phone to someone. So to get around that, because you shouldn't have a single point of failure in your infrastructure or in your organization. So I'll actually screenshot that QR code, put it somewhere secure, and then have a backup person who also activates it as an MFA device on their phone so that we have multiple people capable of accessing our root account. And these are trusted individuals, right? I'm not gonna pick, um, you know, somebody who's not trustworthy. Not that I'm calling people in my company trustworthy. There's just different levels of trust and different levels of um, responsibility, I guess, is the better word. After you get that set up, head down here to access keys. Again, if this is a brand new account for you, this is going to be blank and it should always, 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 forevermore stay blank. You never need a set of access keys for your root user. So if you log in here and there happens to be a set, delete them. And that may make you a little uncomfortable, right? You may be like, wait, I don't want to delete these keys. What the hell are they doing? And that's my point exactly. They shouldn't be doing anything. So we're going to delete them at a time that is known and orchestrated by us so that we can identify what breaks and then go fix that and get it back up and running without using root level access keys. The alternative is you run your AWS environment in this state of fear and paranoia, scared to change anything because you don't know what's gonna break. And just it's been my experience over many, many years that the pain's gonna come either way. The pain is coming. The only difference is do you pick the time and place when you embrace that pain or do you wait for it to wait for it to surprise you at 2 a.m. when you're partially drunk and slightly hung over? Okay, I'll quit ranting about that. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, set up. We've taken all this time and effort to secure our root account, right? And we're going to set up, before we're done with this video, some users that we use to manage our AWS stuff without using the root account. And that's our policy, right? We'll tell everybody, hey, use your IAM credentials. Don't use the root account. We're going to secure the root account so that not many people have access to it. But we trust, then verify. So let's verify. So I'm going to go over to CloudFormation. And I'm going to create a stack and I'm going to upload a template file and I'll also put in the description down below where I got this template file. It's not something I wrote myself. I relied on other people to write, on, write it. Those other people being Amazon who probably know a thing or two about this that I don't. So uh, let's hit next here and then I'll show you what this thing does. We're going to call it root login notification and it's asking me for an email address. 
tell you why that's important here in just a second. I'll hit next and then create stack. So we can go look at the template here and I'll show you what's going on here. So a CloudFormation template, if you're not familiar with it, is a declarative based file that allows you to build resources in AWS. All right, so what's that mean? So we're gonna look at resources right here. The first thing we're doing is creating an SNS topic. That SNS topic is a notification system built into AWS that we're using the email protocol to notify people when a certain event is triggered. The event that gets triggered is based on our events rule here. And the event rule here is in the event pattern. And what it's saying is whenever it sees a console sign in from CloudTrail with a user identity of root, that's gonna trigger this event causing the SNS topic to get a notification. And I know that this CloudFormation template is doing its thing because I just got an email notification saying I've been subscribed to the topic root AWS console sign in via CloudTrail. I need to confirm that subscription. So on clicking that link, I get my subscription confirmed box. And now it says create complete. So let me show you what that did. And we can go one of two places here. We can go to CloudWatch or we can go to Amazon EventBridge. Amazon EventBridge is the new name for CloudWatch events. And hopefully that's because they finally got the hint that they've got too many products with the word cloud in their damn name. I mean, we've got CloudWatch, we've got CloudTrail, we've got CloudFormation. My question is, why don't we have Cloud Cloud? Why can't I have a cloud in the cloud for my cloud-based customers? Anyway, Amazon EventBridge, view rules. Check this out. We've got the root login notification, root activity rule. The event pattern, which I showed you in our CloudFormation template, it got built through that template. And then the notification for that is an SNS topic. So if we go to SNS topics, the simple notification service, we have one topic. And when I click on that, we have one subscription, which is my email address, and that has been confirmed. One last thing you need to do to make sure that this works is go into CloudTrail. So we'll go to, I'll just show you, we'll go over here to CloudTrail. And if you don't have any CloudTrail activities or events turned on, you'll just have a simple button that says create trail. So you'll create a trail. It'll default to the name management events. It's just going to default to logging all API activity to an S3 bucket. So what's that mean? What it actually means is if I sign out and then sign back in, that should trigger that SNS topic and send me an email letting me know that somebody just logged in as the root user in this account. So now this is not a real time alert. It takes a few minutes to get these alerts through there. So don't think that this is a, like a, oh my God, someone's hacking the matrix. We got to stop them at the firewall type thing. It's not like, it took about 10 minutes for that one to come in. I actually just went outside and there's a thunderstorm rolling in. So I watched that for a few minutes. When I came back, it was there. And that's not weird, okay? I live in the desert. It doesn't rain here very often. So it's kind of a big deal here. I actually even close schools when it rains. We close schools when it's not raining too, which may be why we're 49th in education in the US. But hey, we're still kicking Mississippi's ass, so, you know, we got that going for us, which is nice. Anyway, the next thing I want to do is set up a billing alert. And this can be a bit tricky because you may not know what to expect for your bill, but we're going to start with our billing dashboard. And while you may not know what a valid number is, you've probably got a pretty good idea of what you don't want it to be, and so that's a good place to start. So from the billing dashboard, we're gonna go over to billing preferences and then turn on receive billing alerts. Then I'm gonna go back over to CloudWatch. I'm gonna go over to alarms and click create alarm. We'll hit select metric and then we'll select billing and then select total estimated charge in US dollars and select that metric. 
and we're using a static threshold here whenever the estimated charge is greater than and I'm gonna put ten thousand dollars there so we'll hit next and then we'll add a notification sending it to a new topic calling it estimated monthly billing adding my address and hit create topic then we can hit next give our alarm a name hit next again and then finally hit create alarm and again because that's a new SNS topic I'm gonna to get that subscription confirmation email that I'll have to click on again to activate my subscription so that's gonna pretty well secure our root account and the next thing I want to do is create a new user that can log in and do everything that they need to do without using those root credentials. All right, so we're gonna do that over in Identity and Access Management or IAM. So let's go take a look at how that works. So I'm gonna head over to IAM and I'm gonna start by creating a user. That user is gonna be me and I get programmatic access and console access. So the way I manage users in AWS is through managing groups and it says right here using groups is the best practice way so that makes me feel better about doing it. So we'll create a group. We'll call the group admins and ideally there'll be only a few people in this. Most of the people in AWS should be operating in groups that only give them the minimum amount of permissions they need to do their job. And then I'm going to select the policies that I want to apply. I think this is the one that I want, although there's a couple called admin, oh, we get tool tips. But it'd be really great if this would like slide over so I could see the full name. But um, administrator access amplify or beanstalk, we don't care about either of those. We just want plain administrator access that provides full access to AWS services. Which is kind of misleading because it doesn't really provide full access. There's a couple of things you can't get to as the member of administrator access. Most of the ones I've encountered are relating to AWS billing. Like if you're deep into the billing stuff, you still have to be the root user, but whatever. So we'll create the group. I'm added to that group. I don't really use tags a whole lot on my users. I use them everywhere else, but I don't really have a good use for them for users. If you had a really large AWS organization you might want to tag them by team or by um, by their roles and so that looks correct and I'm gonna click create user but I'm not gonna show that to you because that's gonna reveal my first time user password and AWS access keys which you probably don't need to see those and the last thing I'll show you here is just the overall user view it shows all of your users the groups that they are in and then the most important thing to me on this are these last four columns. How old are their access keys? How old are their passwords? When were they last logged in? And are they using MFA? So I require everyone to have MFA. And when I say require, I don't have a specific IAM policy that I use. Um, most of the teams I work with are pretty small. So I don't have to go to that level of detail. You can create a group policy and apply that forcing them to have MFA I just look at this whenever I set someone up and if anyone doesn't have MFA I just go talk to them and tell them hey turn the MFA on dude um, big things are password age and access key age making sure that those get rotated on a frequent basis 90 days is probably a pretty good rule and in the past I have set up some different jobs that would check and notify users when their passwords are 90 days old for a new account like this um, it's probably a bit premature for that but at some point this team is going to grow to the size where we do end up enabling something like that all right I think that's kind of going to get us up and going here for this AWS account we secured the root password we set up MFA for the root account. We turned on the notifications so we know that anytime that gets, um, gets somebody logging in through the root credentials, we're notified about it. Turned on a billing alert and then created our first IAM user. And we'll be using that IAM account to set up the rest of the AWS infrastructure, which is going to involve creating 
user accounts for the development teams, creating groups that they belong to, and using that to control what they have access to in AWS. And um, yeah, so from there, we're going to dig into uh, setting up the infrastructure itself, the VPC, those kinds of things. So I'll probably just jump right into recording that video. And if you liked this video, found it helpful, thought it was funny, whatever, go ahead and click the like button for me and also subscribe to the channel and click the notification so that you get notified when I release new videos on DevOps topics. And I'll see you next time.